The president said his response to the report said on Friday that the federal government had more looted funds to recover overseas and would not agree to anyone trying to complicate its efforts at making the recovery. It said in a statement that the $308 billion, about $110 billion naira batch of loot on which Nigeria recently secured an agreement for repatriation of the funds to Nigeria will be spent solely on terms of the agreement and nothing else. The statement by the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, was however silent on the allegations raised by the U.S. Justice Department that the federal government was planning to give about $100 million to Bagudu and that it was blocking attempts to retrieve loot from the Kebi governor. The statement partly reveals that by a decision of this government, the entire sum will be paid to the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority, NSIA, and will be used in expediting the construction of three major infrastructure projects across Nigeria, namely the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, Abuja Kano Expressway, and the second Niger Bridge. Also, the Special Advisor and Media and Publicity Relations Office of the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Dr. Umar Jibrilu Gwandu, while dismissing the allegation by the U.S. said the story regarding paying a governor such an amount of the repatriated abacho loot is unfounded and baseless. It is only a fiction and figment of imagination of mischief makers who are bent on destroying the good effort of the federal government. The report should be disregarded by any sensible and well-meaning persons. Joining us in the studio is Debra Deniron, Center for Anti-Corruption and Open Leadership and Executive Director there. Thank you very much for joining us on the News on the Hour. Now, what is your reaction to all of this development and happiness regarding the Abacha repatriated loots and the said allegation about $100 million meant to be paid to a certain governor? Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, the federal government has always been saying that uh, Abacha loot is being repatriated. Uh, up to now, we, the, the federal government has not confirmed the actual amount, amount. of money that is being expected. The amounts that has been repatriated, what has it been used for? Uh, we, we know that they have planned you know, to spend the next tranche on those three principal projects okay, you okay. talk about, thought, I mean, um, um, what do you call it now? The Second Niger Bridge, Bridge yes. uh, Lagos, Ibadan, Kano, expert, yeah. and Abja, and all those things. But then, there are, the federal government is expected to do more. When Bagudu was uh, repatriated to Nigeria, uh, was it repatriated, we should call it, mm -hmm. you know, it was for government to promptly hand him over to the anti-corruption agency yes. for prosecution. But what did they do? The uh, government now entered into a, a, a plea bargain with them that if he could... Um, and there was an agreement, there was a written they agreement. Cl they claimed the claim. that this was an agreement yes. based on the, uh, what do you call, um, what did I call just now? You know, plea, a plea, the plea a bargain. Plea bargain yeah. Okay, yeah. that if you return that, it will not be prosecuted, which was wrong because the, 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 the concept of plea, plea bargain, bargain was to discount the punishment that is due to the uh, offender, yes. not to forgive him in its entirety. But be using the loot now, the loot remaining with him, he was able to win election two times as senator and one time as governor. Okay. Now, he has immunity uh, that he could not be prosecuted. And before then, as soon as this Habacha loot was, uh, was discovered during Obasanjo uh, regime or administration, we raised the question that it, it wasn't possible for only the head of state to loot that humongous amount of money, that some other you know, um, actors yes. should, I mean, could have been involved, some, uh, some financial institutions could have also so been involved, yeah. that there will be some accomplices, even if th those accomplices are going to be immediate staff of the former head of state. But then, the then accountant general, the then auditor general, and those that are in charge of finances then, even when it was military regime, should have been promptly arrested and questioned on the destination of the money. Then the receiver countries, the US, the Zwa uh, Switzerland, and several other countries of the world that received those countries, I mean, those, those loot, 
could have been reported to the United Nations. Because look, Nigeria is a developing country. It's perpetually developing because some people have um, taken away the, 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 the energy with which it could gather enough vigor to develop from third world country to second world country or maybe aspiring to the first world country. Okay. So why don't the world agency you know, come upon those, I mean, come hard upon those who are receiving stolen, stolen funds from any country like Nigeria. Yeah. So we have raised that. Government didn't show any interest. You could imagine that Obasanjo's administration actually entered into several, you know, uh, agreements that was not in favor of Nigeria. Okay. I mean, begging to d digress, it was the same administration that ceded Bakasi to Cameroon which was against the interest of Nigeria. Several other agreements like that, including the P, uh, P and D, uh, P and I and D. Yeah, P and I agreement, and D. Several agreements like that that happened even in the Jonathan administration. So okay. all of these have been done against the interest of Nigeria. So basically, what we are saying is that the repatriation of the money should be promptly done. There are conventions under which the Nigerian government can make a demand on those countries where the money are being hidden. Then, those countries should not lay claim to any interest or okay. any commission accruing to them because they are, they are receivers of stolen goods okay. and which they have to pay back to Nigeria. Now, that the federal government is trying to give Bagudu $100 million has not been confirmed. Um, the U.S. Uh, department has I'm not also told us why the Nigerian government want to give it. But because of the way politics is played in Nigeria, it may not be far from the truth. The government is not going to confirm it. It is left for us in the civil society and you in the media to contact all those um, ends that could be contacted. Okay. Starting from the U.S., using FOI in Nigeria, and insisting that the issue of the $100 million that is supposed to be handed over for Bagudu that is supposed to be behind the bars should be honored okay. and let the whole country know now, what is now going in on. Its, in its response to the report on Friday, the, the presidency and also the AGF have come out to say it's, it's, a, it's an attempt to to complicate more, um, re that there are more loots abroad that Nigeria and the federal government needs to, to get hold on, that this, this is a calculated attempt just to complicate this for the federal government. Do, do you share that thought? Well, it may not be far from the truth. Okay. Because when you see the antics of the United States of America, they don't want Nigeria to grow. And most of the time, when they claim they are, they are assisting Nigeria, they are assisting Nigeria just to reap you know, from where they didn't sow. Most of the time, they want to keep Nigeria perpetually low. They want to do a lot of, I mean, it, it is just in, in the interest of their own um, uh, uh, economy yes. that they claim they do. Even when they hand over, you know, um, grants and the rest of them to Nigerian organization and all that, it is to, to heighten the interest, I mean, um, those things that interest you know, the foreign policy of the U.S., not because they love us. So this question may also be that the United Nations, I mean, the United States Safety, yes. wants to use that, you know, to downplay the need for them to repatriate Nigerian loot that are in their custody, okay. enjoying the benefits of the interest that's supposed to have accrued on that, and laying claim to the fact that they want to know what Nigeria wants to use its money for. It, so all it, of this. Interesting, you said the U.S. might, might there might be such um, there might be such plan, but the, the Department of Justice, the U.S. Department of Justice, actually did say that um, the Nigerian government is hindering the U.S. efforts to recover alleged laundered money. And they said they could trace to Bagudi. And this was reported on Friday by Bloomberg. They well, are saying they, they're out to help Nigeria. And Nigerians are saying something differently. What well, exactly the, is playing the, out the, here? the truth is that we cannot also trust Nigerian government in its entirety. Okay. We don't know where the truth lies. But either party could be mischievous in their approach to this Abacha loot. Because Niger uh, American government is reluctant, just like the UK and several other foreign countries that are holding Nigeria to ransom over the, their, their own property. But then, it is also possible that Nigeria will want to frustrate the effort of the US. US. But when, when US 
Christ expresses love for a country, you have to uh, accept it with suspicion. Okay. You know, because at the, at the fullness of time, yes. you will discover that they have some undercurrents that you will, you will discover is not in the favor of the uh, 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 the subject, the, okay. the country that they claim that they are helping. But the Nigerian government cannot be trusted too because many of those that are in power today are the same people who help successive government to launder their loot or to keep it in safe havens. Mm. They are the same persons who serve as consultants. Several financial institutions are involved in the laundering of these humongous amounts of money. All right, Bangu, yes. Bangu is out to say the that the report was aimed at using the media to sensationalize the case and while the u.s authorities were using it as a ploy to halt recovery of looted fund this was Bagudi's response to yeah to I, I think i think um if a case is not sensational nobody can sensationalize it uh, Bagudu should have submitted himself to prosecution when he came back from New Jersey or wherever he, he was held up in uh, the U.S. He shouldn't have contested for the governor's, uh, in fact, as a senator, not to talk of governorship, governor, yeah. to clear his name. It is only in Nigeria that uh, politicians are not in a hurry to clear their names of uh, wrongdoing, especially when it has to do with corruption. We still have a, 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 a preponderance of uh, corrupt elements in the Nigerian government at the three, uh, three, level, uh, three arms of government, mm -hmm. both in the executive. Only very few people are fighting corruption in the government. Very, very few. If you if you if you if you ask me, maybe those, the number of those who are who really you know meant fighting corruption can be counted on one of your fingers. Okay. So basically, we still have them there until Nigerian people rise up against these people. Government cannot because if government want to prosecute all corrupt elements in its in, within its fold the government will collapse. Now, Nigeria should be ready to pick up the gauntlet and so that if government collapses, then Nigeria should be able to pick it up. But Nigeria itself is not yet organized for that takeover. And that is why the evolution is still far away from coming. Thank you very much, Executive Chairman, Center for Anti-Corruption and Open Leadership, Debo Adeniro. Thank you very much for being part of News on the Hour. It's my pleasure. Thank you.